Who is the real Victor Bout? What made him the most wanted man in the world until Osama bin Laden? How did he build the largest criminal organization in history? Why was his exchange for basketball player Brittany Griner controversial? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we've answered these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Victor Bout was born 13 January 1967, location in dispute, and was the world largest arms dealer, along with legendary arms dealer Saudi businessman Adnan Khashoggi, known for his lavish business deals and lifestyle. Bout was Soviet military weapons manufacturer and former Soviet military translator, and he used his multiple aircraft and export companies as fronts to smuggle arms from Eastern Europe to Africa and the Middle East during the 1990s and early 2000s. Boat graduated from the Russian Military Institute of Foreign Languages, fluent in several languages, Portuguese, English, French, Dari, Arabic, and Persian Farsi, as well as Esperanto, which he learned at age 12 in the early 1980s as a member of the Dushanbe Esperanto Club. Bout's personal website stated that he served in the Soviet Army as a translator holding the rank of lieutenant. Bout's exact military and intelligence work is still clouded in mystery. He apparently retired in 1991 after the Soviet Union dissolved with the rank of lieutenant colonel. But his intelligence connections suggest that he also worked for the KGB and the GRU during his career. Bout was involved with the Soviet and Cuban military operations in Angola in the late 1980s assisting the People's Movement for Liberation of Angola, MPLA, during the long-running Angolan Civil War. That conflict had been hot and heavy since the 1970s. It was reported that both Bout and former Deputy Prime Minister Igor Sechin of the GRU were working in Mozambique in the 1980s supporting the communist insurgency there. But both Sechin and Boot deny that connection despite the evidence of Boot's weapons being delivered there. Boot was known to have flown shipments out of Bulgaria and the weapons destined for the use in the Angolan Civil War by UNITA, founded by Jonas Savimbi, who was anti-communist and the opposing faction of the MPLA, which Boot had also aided during his military service. In 1993, UNITA was covered under Resolution 864, a United Nations Security Council embargo prohibiting the importation of arms to Angola. Boot could have cared less. In 1993, he began collaborating with Richard Kachakli. His safe zone for transports was the Sharjah International Airport, which he began using in 1995 in the United Arab Emirates. During Boat's reported operations, he is believed to have lived in various countries, including Belgium, Lebanon, Rwanda, Russia, South Africa, Syria, and the United Arab Emirates, among others. The UAE hired Kachakli to be the commercial manager of its new free trade zone which Boot began using, and Chichakli was at one time called Boot's financial manager by the United States who was tracking his shipments. Boot sold to anyone, regardless of politics. He was also reportedly working with communist factions in Southern Africa, especially in South Africa and Rhodesia, where he learned the Zosha and Zulu languages. After the collapse of the USSR, Boot used his connections to purchase surplus Soviet-era military equipment, including three Antonov AN-12 aircraft. He founded an air freight business, Air Cess, in Liberia in 1995. From 1989 to 1997, Boot was suspected of supplying President and dictator Charles Taylor with arms for use in the First Liberian Civil War, with eyewitnesses claiming that the two met personally on a few occasions. Ironically, Air Cess is the only company connected to Boat that has ever officially recognized him as the head. He operated four of his Antonov AN-8 planes in Angola, as it was the only country to allow the AN-8 to be used in civilian freight at the time. Boat had been involved with arms deals during the Yugoslav Wars, especially with the Bosnian government forces during its uprising against Slobodan Milosevic and his Serbian government in Yugoslavia. Hasan Cingic, 
who was the deputy prime minister and defense minister of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, was one of Boot's in-country contacts. The two knew each other since their days in Tehran, Iran, during the 1980s and 1990s. The Slobna Bosna newspaper stated that Cechnik was a business partner of Boot when 200,000 AK-47 rifles being transported by one of Boot's airlines went missing in transit from Bosnia to Iraq in May 2006. Beginning in 1994, Boot supported the pre-Taliban government of Afghanistan, which later became the Northern Alliance, and he knew Ahmad Shah Massoud. The Central Intelligence Agency may have been involved as to have plausible deniability using Boot-owned planes as transporters of small arms and ammunition into Afghanistan. In 1995, Boot was involved in negotiations to free Russian hostages during the 1995 air stand incident. In 2000, Boat was charged in the Central African Republic with forging documents and was convicted in absentia for smuggling illegal weapons and transporting mercenaries, but the charges were later dropped. In November 2001, soon after the beginning of the war in Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda reportedly moved gold and cash out of Afghanistan using Boat's aircraft, although he claimed he only worked with the Allied-friendly Northern Alliance. Boat's activities included allegedly delivering service-to-air missiles to Islamic extremists in northeast Kenya near the Somali border, which was under constant UN scrutiny, to be used to attack an Israeli airliner during takeoff in 2002. In July 2003, the New York Times interviewed Boat, who stated that, I woke up after September 11, and I found I was second only to Osama as the world's most wanted man. Regardless of his most wanted status, in 2004, Belt and Tuchakli reunited and allegedly set up Samar Airlines in Tajikistan to conduct money laundering activities. This was another cover operation to protect their assets from international authorities, which was part of the indictment against him by the U.S. Justice Department in 2010. Boat is suspected of supplying weapons to numerous armed groups in Africa in the 2000s continuing primarily in the Democratic Republic of the Congo during the Second Congo War, where he had as many as 300 employees and operated between 40 and 60 aircraft on a regular basis. Boat's U.S. assets were frozen in July 2004 under Executive Order 13348, which describes him as a businessman, dealer, and transporter of weapons and minerals, and cites his close association with Charles Taylor, a wanted war criminal. This put a major financial strain on Boot's cash assets, which forced him to expand operations and make up the deficit. His new connections for hard currency included supplying Hezbollah from 2005 to 2006, as they prepared for the Lebanon War, as well as providing missiles and explosives for attacks against Israel. During this period, the United Nations and the United States, as well as European nations, were sending billions of dollars worth of building materials to rebuild homes and businesses that had been destroyed. Boat's aircraft were apparently used and smuggled aboard were the weapons violating the various international embargoes. Of great interest, in 2007, the Los Angeles Times reported that the U.S. government and its contractors paid boat controlled firms roughly $60 million to fly supplies into Iraq in support of American forces. While being hunted, records found in Tripoli after the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi proved that in late September 2003, British intelligence officials told then Libyan intelligence chief Musa Kusa that boat had set up a smuggling operation in Libya. It was at this time that Boat became known as the Merchant of Death and the Sanctions Buster, after British government minister Peter Hain read a report to the United Nations in 2003 exposing Boot's global arms smuggling operations, extensive clientele, and ability to bypass embargoes. In early 2008, a U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration paid informer claiming to represent the Colombian rebel group called the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC, negotiated with Boat for the supply of 100 9K-38 IGLA surface-to-air missiles and armor-piercing rocket launchers. These were to be parachuted into agreed drop zones in Colombia on a very tight schedule. The undercover operatives invited Bout to Bangkok, Thailand, to meet with their leader. This was a ruse. At that time, the U.S. military was attacking the Colombian rebel group 
as well as the cocaine producers alongside the Colombian military and DEA as part of Plan Colombia. Boat was arrested upon arrival and charged with terrorism offenses that included conspiracy to acquire and use an anti-aircraft missile, conspiracy to provide material support or resources to a designated foreign terrorist organization, conspiracy to kill U.S. nationals, and conspiracy to kill United States officers or employees. Boat was arrested and charged with terrorism also by the Royal Thai Police in cooperation with American authorities and Interpol. Bout was also charged with conspiracy to kill U.S. citizens and officials in other countries by using anti-aircraft missiles to shoot down aircraft at various locations yet to be disclosed and also aiding additional terrorist organizations. The U.S. ambassador to Thailand, Eric G. John, requested his extradition under the Extradition Act with Thailand, which was eventually mandated by the Thai High Court in August 2010. After months of delays and red tape, the criminal court in Bangkok began an extradition hearing for Bout on 22 September 2008. In February 2009, members of the United States Congress signed a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expressing their wish that the Bout extraction remain a top priority. However, Bout's luck held for a while. On 11 August 2009, the Bangkok Criminal Court ruled in his favor denying the United States' request for extradition and citing the political, not criminal, nature of the case. The United States Department of State appealed that ruling, citing the criminal international actions. And on 20 August 2010, a higher court in Thailand ruled that Bout could be extradited to the United States. On 16 November 2010, the Russian government filed a complaint against the extradition, calling it illegal, but that argument fell on deaf ears. Russia's foreign ministry took steps to prevent Bout being extradited to the U.S. Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, even suggested that Bout was innocent of all charges. Then, in a stunning reversal, on 18 November 2010, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev's aide, Sergei Pedotko, said that, Russia had nothing to hide in Boat's criminal case, stating, It is in our interest that the investigation be brought to completion, and Boat should answer all the questions the American justice system has. On 2 November 2011, Boat was convicted by a jury at the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York in Manhattan. He was sentenced to the minimum 25 years imprisonment. On 18 January 2013, Russian government officials announced that judges, investigators, justice ministry officials, and special services agents who were involved in Russian citizens, Viktor Bouts and Konstantin Yaroshenko's legal prosecution and sentencing to long terms of imprisonment should be added to the list of U.S. officials who will be denied Russian entry visas. This was in response to the U.S. Magnitsky Act, under which certain Russian officials are ineligible to enter the U.S., from 21 June 2012 until December 8, 2022, Boot was held at the United States Penitentiary in Marion, Illinois. Victor Bout was exchanged for American basketball player Brittany Griner on December 8, 2022. However, former Marine Paul Whelan, who has been in Russia for four years, was sentenced to 16 years in 2020 on espionage charges, charges which seem nefarious at best. The State Department protocol mandates that prisoners who are to be exchanged should have one of three criteria, one being national security issues, the other being which person has been held the longest, and which person has health issues that may facilitate an, an expediting of their release. Paul Whelan has been there for four years and has certain health issues, whereas Brittany Griner has been there less than a year and has no such impediments. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.